Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about banking basics. We're going to be able to describe the advantages of having a checking and savings account, the difference between debit and credit cards, as well as some good techniques for when you write paper checks. All right, let's get started. So the first type of account I want to talk about is a checking account. This is your workhorse account. This is the account where you're going to have money coming in from your paycheck and then going out to pay for all your different stuff. With a checking account, you can set up direct deposit, which is where your employer electronically takes, sends your money from, your, um, from them into your bank account directly. So there's no having to go to the bank and cash a paper check from your employer. Your money just shows up on your payday. You can also write checks using this account. So this paper checks, you can write checks for different things you need. You can also use a debit card to spend money in this account. So we'll talk more about debit cards later, um, but that are super convenient to use. And you can connect this type of account to payment apps such as Venmo, Google Pay, Apple Pay, Square Cash, PayPal, Zelle, all of those different things. You can link your account to it so it takes money directly out of your checking account and then sends that money to someone else to pay for something. The other major type of account is called a savings account. Um, this is where you save money for large purchases and emergencies. You want to build this account up slowly over time so that you have three to six months of income in that account. Um, and one other thing to note here is that savings accounts, typical savings accounts, make very low interest. So some banks will um, promote their savings accounts by saying we have high interest, but it's only like 1% interest. It's not a meaningful amount of interest. A savings account is not a good place to make money on interest. Um, it's a good place to have money on hand, so if an emergency happens, you can have that money, but you're not going to be making money on that. We will learn about some other accounts where you can put your money to actually earn money for you over time, um, but the more interest you earn on an account, typically speaking, the less access you have to that money to quickly pay for something. So a savings account is great because you have instant access to pull it all out if you need to, to pay for an emergency. All right. Oh, and don't forget the pay yourself first strategy. So when you get paid, the first thing you should do is take a little bit of that money and put it in a savings account as much as you can, then go and pay all your bills. That way you're not using up all your money and never saving. You need to build up that savings account. You will have emergencies in life and you will need money during those. All right, enough of preaching for me. <laughs> All right, so why checking accounts? So some people are like, well, I just keep my money as cash. Like I like to use cash and not use checking accounts. So they offer some really important benefits you should know about. The first and most important is FDIC insurance. That stands for the Federal Deposit Insurance Company, FDIC. Um, this is a government agency that guarantees up to $250,000 per depositor per account. So if something goes wrong with the bank or um, the bank goes under, your account will be recovered by the, by the federal government up to $250,000. So it is a FDI insured account. So that's important as well. If uh, your house burns down and you have money, you have all your money as cash in your house, that money is just gone. Whereas here, the money will be insured. Okay. Built-in proof of payment. So when paying with a check or balance transfer or debit card, that is going to show up on your monthly statement so you have that proof of payment. We talked about that during the debit card strategy and the receipt strategy, well, the debit card strategy primarily. Um, and the other big thing is you can set up direct deposit. When I was your guys' age, every Friday, the lines of the bank would be huge because everybody would get their paycheck and they would have to go down to the bank and stand in line and wait to deposit into their account. It was a nuisance. So it's really nice to have direct deposit. Your money just shows up electronically it's transferred from your employer to your bank account. Really convenient. And the other nice thing about checking accounts is they all, these days they all have online bill pay. So you can go online, type in who you want to send a check to, and the bank will do all the check writing and sending for you. Um, oftentimes those things can be very automated as well. Really cool features these days in checking accounts. All right, debit versus credit cards. So here... A debit card, the money comes straight from your checking account. It's your money. 
Whereas a credit card, you are borrowing money from the credit card company. So it's money you don't have that you have to pay back in the future. Debit card, when you swipe your debit card, your account goes down. So you, you um, use your money right away. There's no interest on a debit card ever. So you don't pay any extra fees for using a debit card. Credit card, you pay interest on any balances over 30 days old. So once that, once you buy something, after 30 days, you start paying interest on it. So that's an additional fee you pay. Um, debit cards are easy to get even with poor credit scores. So if you, you've had problem with managing your money in the past, you can still get a debit card and use it. These are hard, credit cards are hard to get with poor credit scores. Um, we'll talk more about credit cards and, and credit scores in the future. So if that's not clicking quite yet, it's okay. There are no annual fees for a uh, debit card. And some credit cards can have annual fees. So an annual fee is every year they charge you $30 um, to have the card, basically. Um, and we'll talk more about fees when we get to credit cards. Um, typically, a debit card, you can't spend more than what's in your checking account. So when you run out of money in your checking account, your card, well, there's two options. One, banks can allow the charge to go through, and then you'll be over-debited, and there'll be a lot of fees charged with that. They're called overdraft fees. Um, it's a terrible thing. You can also tell your bank, hey, if there's no money in the account to cover that purchase, deny me at the, check, at the cash register. I prefer that method. I would rather be embarrassed at the store but not having enough money than I would to get $20, $30 of charges every time I swipe my card. My wife were on vacation in Hawaii and we forgot to transfer some money to pay for all the, the things we'd be buying. And uh, we ran out of money in our account, embarrassingly. Um, and... We bought a bunch of small things, and each small thing we bought was an overdraft. So it was like a $30 fee for each of those. So it ended up being like 150 bucks on these like five little gas station or small purchases we made. Um, and it was, it was not good. So we had our debit cards changed so that uh, we actually had our savings account linked to our checking account. So if our checking account ever went down accidentally again, it would pull money from savings to cover it. Um, there's still a fee for that, but it's better than the other one. We'll talk more about that later. All right. And the credit card, you can spend more money than you have um, as long as you're under your credit limit. So when you get a credit card, they'll say, hey, your spending limit is like $1,000 or $500. As long as you haven't filled that up or used up all that credit card, that credit limit, you can buy things that you can't, you don't have money for, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. So more on that with credit cards. Paper checks. So I keep hearing that paper checks are dead and no one, whatever, they're, they're, they're the past. That might happen at some point in the future, but for now, paper checks are still alive and well. My advice when you get a checking account is to get a small book of checks. You're gonna find them really useful every once in a while in your life. So some of the advantage of having um, checks is they can be easily mailed to someone. Um, so if you're filling out mail, or um, doing bills, uh, it's really easy to just pop a check in and mail it. You can't mail cash. Um, it can also be used for paying for services. So if you have a plumber or an electrician or someone come to your house to fix something, um, you can pay for the, their, their fee. You can do that with a personal check usually. Uh, they can be written for the exact amount. There's no need for change. So with cash, you've got to make sure you have the right change. If you're going to give them to them, you don't have to worry about all that. You can just write it for the right amount. You never actually want to pay for someone who comes to work on your house in cash. Um, typically, uh, the company doesn't want that because there's no record of how much you gave that person. And there could be some confusion over, oh, I gave them $300 and they only gave you $250. So uh, most companies do not allow their employees to accept cash as payment for something. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, checks have this, you know, uh, proof of payment built into them because it'll actually show up on your bank account statement that check will um, and then often when you get a new job employers will ask you for a voided check because it has important direct deposit information on it and we'll talk about that in the next section some disadvantages some of them are obvious they're super uh, um, time-consuming to write so if you've ever been stuck behind somebody writing a paper check in, in the um, grocery store it can take longer 
And there can be sometimes a couple day uh, delay in having to check cash. So if you write a check out to, you know, for, for some plumbing work done, it might be a few days to a week before that money comes out of your account. So be between then you have to just remember, don't spend that money um, until that check clears. And then uh, if you get a whole bunch of checks, I wouldn't recommend this either. If that box of checks gets stolen, people can actually try to forge checks and write them. Um, and you have to, it, it's, it's problematic. So don't get more checks than what you need and then keep them in a safe place um, where people can't get to them. Okay. So the anatomy of a check. So this is a, what a typical check would look like. Um, your account holder, so this is your name and address and everything is up in the upper left hand corner typically. Uh, here on this line, you're going to be uh, writing the company or the person you're paying to. If you're making the check out for services rendered for like a plumber or electrician, this should be a company name, not the employee's name. Um, and then here you're going to write out the amount of the check in words. So here it's in numbers and then here it's in words and that helps you um, avoid fraud. This is the bank name here. This is the memo line. So here you can write whatever you want. You can even leave it blank. Here you might put, hey, plumbing or electrical work or whatever you're writing the check for. That way later you kind of know what it's for. This first set of numbers down here is important. This is the routing. So between this kind of smiley face symbol and this smiling face symbol, this is the routing number. And this identifies the bank where you have your account at. So this is a unique number for each bank out there. Um, yep. And then this next set of numbers from this smiley face down to this little weird symbol here, this is your account number at the bank. So this way, when, when, we're, when you write a check, the check gets processed and a computer will actually read these numbers. It'll know what bank it's supposed to pull the money from and then what account to pull the money from. So this is the key information. You'll be asked for your routing number throughout your life and the routing number is this first number on the check. Then this last little number is the actual which check it is, is the check number. Notice how this number will always match the check number up here as well. This is the signature line, so checks have to be signed in order to be valid, so I don't think anyone can check, I mean, no one was checking the signatures, so I'm not sure why we use signatures anymore, but we still do. Um, and this is where you write the amount in numbers. And I would even write this, when I, when I write mine, I, I do, uh, let me turn on the pen real quick. Um, I'll write it more like this. So 127, instead of using a decimal point, which can be easy to miss, I'll do 56 over 100. And that's like 56 cents. And so you can really see that it's 56 cents. Otherwise, if I, if as a, as a thief, I'm going to go here and I can get trying to erase this little dot here and then put a comma there and now it looks like it's 12,756 maybe. So distinguishing that is an important thing. Um, again there's the check number and then the date. You can do what's called post dated check which means you can write this date in the future but there's nothing stopping someone from cashing that check. Once you give someone the check um, they can cash if they if they whenever they're ready to cash it. So you can't legally like post date it for some future time. Um, okay, a few last things to talk about. When you're writing a check, some smart things to do. Keep the space, so this will prevent, help prevent fraud. Keep the space here really small. So start writing at the very left hand side like they did here. Let me show you why that is. So what I don't wanna do is have somebody be able to do this and put like a one here. That's easy to add that later and make it look really realistic. The one of the main reason, one of the main ways that we have to fight this is you write it in words here. It's super important. This is the most important thing I can tell you about checks. To start writing the name of the um, number as far to the left as possible. What that does is it doesn't leave any room for someone to add some number in front, like the word 1,000. If I started writing over here the 100, and it was written there, someone could come in and write 1,000 right in front of it 
and now they have to just put a one and a comma here, and now you have a check for one thousand dollars. So make sure when you're writing the values of the check that they're way over here on the left hand side, as well as the numbers, scooch them over to the left hand side. All right, that's it for the lesson of the day. Um, great job. I hope that was useful information.